Let's go crazy. Let's get nuts. We are back out again to see my friend. If you don't know, now you know this. Hey, hey, sounds what they call me. Michael Jackson's Ebony Jet interview, 1997. I believe this is right after he uh, released Bad. So, fingers crossed. This is better than the Oprah interview. We're going to find out right now. Let's go. Out with the new album. How do you feel now that the album is out? Woo! Look at the drip, though. Look at the drip, though. Look at the drip. Look at the drip. Okay, Michael. But let's go. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel rejuvenated, kind of, because after working on it so long, it's so much work. A lot of people they're used to um, just seeing the outcome of work. They never see the side of the work you go through to produce the outcome. Mm. And uh, I feel, you know, rejuvenated and happy. It's, it's a jubilation, really, is what it is. It's like a celebration. It's like, we're done. How long did it take to come up with, I guess you almost wrote eight songs or seven songs on it? How long did it take to come up with that creative process? I don't remember. Um, <laughs> I totally don't remember. I don't even count the hours or anything. Mm -hmm. Every song is different. Sometimes mm -hmm. it happens it quickly, sometimes it happens slowly. No one can quite say what the creative process is because right. I have nothing to do with it almost because it's created in space. It's God's work, not mine. Mm, you know. Talk about it, Michael! Oh, I love you, Michael! <laughs> Oh my God! All right, all right. I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna try to chill, yo. I'm try. I'm really trying to relax. I'm trying to be chill right now, okay? But yeah, that's yeah. I like like that's why Michael's music translated the way it did because he used the elements. He used the universe, God. Um, he he talked about that in in other interviews as well. Like that's how Michael did his work, and and, and it shows, and that's why I connected to the people. Um, but yeah, just, man, man, I miss your mic. Okay, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. I'm with you. I don't remember. Um, I totally don't remember. I don't even count the hours or anything. Mm -hmm. Every song is different. Sometimes it happens it quickly, sometimes it happens slowly. No one can quite say what the creative process is because I have nothing to do with it almost because it's created in space. It's God's work, not mine. You know, talking about that, God gives us a lot of gifts a lot of times, and you've been really blessed with a tremendous amount of gifts. And yet it seems as though a lot has been required of you. Mm. Do you sometimes regret being so utterly famous? Mm. Great question. No, sometimes. Only sometimes. Sometimes I want to sneak into places and not have any hoopla or, you know, and, uh, and it doesn't work all the time. Because people start and they crowd around, and which is sweet. I mean, I shouldn't complain, but no, but you have, no. A, you have a right to complain because yeah. everybody has a right to go out there and to just be alone. Yeah, it seems like that right isn't really given to you. Well, it's part of the work, I would say. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Like if I saw, <laughs> I really try to think like if I saw Michael Jackson in person, like at a random grocery store or something like that, I would probably be frozen. Like I wouldn't, I I wouldn't, I would be too afraid to even approach him, but you probably have like a billion bodyguards anyway. But let's say he, he didn't, let's say he was just by himself on his on solo dolo and he was by himself. I would be so afraid to even approach you. I'll be still, I would be like, uh, Y'all ain't gonna get this reference. It's a Cosby show. Um, no, no, um, brother, my brother and me. Uh, when uh, Didi, I think Didi was doing a speech, <laughs> he was like, um, um, something like that. But anyway, yeah, I would be so frozen, like I, I wouldn't know what to do. So, Michael, if you was ever in public, you ain't got to worry about me, bro. <laughs> ain't got to worry about me, bro. I'll be stunned. Like, for real. About the song Bad. I, we talked earlier, and I told you that I like the song Bad because it, it's really all about you. You are the baddest when it comes to mm. uh, the record industry. Mm. Talk about it. Talk your shit, Mike. Well, 
Look at Mike trying to be humble. different from anything I've ever recorded or I've ever written. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bold statement to say. But um, I mean it in all good will. <laughs> you know, so don't take it's it too seriously. It's a good modesty. Of course. I mean, you know I'm saying? I'm, I believe, I think LL came out with, I'm bad. I think that came out right before this. So, like, LL kind of started it first. We got to be honest here. If, you, if you're a music, music head like me. But, yeah. It's like a way of saying you're cool, you're, you're, uh, you're all right, you're, you're tough. I'm not saying I'm, like, criminally bad. Of sure. course, that's mm -hmm. how people would take it. Um, it's, a, it's a bold statement to make. Mm -hmm. How about the video? The video is also... Another thing on this album is that a lot of songs make social statements. And the video also does that, too with bad uh, I know that you probably didn't experience anything like that but my name is Daryl yeah I know and I had a I grew up in Harlem in the South Bronx and I went away to oh South South, South Bronx I also had to deal with peer pressures how did you come out about with that whole idea of doing something like that well it wasn't mm. really my idea it's actually part of a true story where this kid tries to my make, story in a yeah it's your story <laughs> but the truth of what really happened uh this kid, <laughs> tell me, Gary Frank. Let's, let's, let's do this. Hold on for a second. Yeah. Please. Tell okay. me, places. Okay, How, now I know that you didn't write the video, but you're telling me the story is almost like the story of my life, but you're telling me that it's. Like, let's look at Michael's, it's something about Michael's eyes, man. It's like, I don't know what it is. It's just like. I don't like I don't know. This is something about Michael's eyes. I can't I don't know how to explain it. Like it's just like, man, like it, like you can feel Michael through his eyes. Like I don't even know how like I don't know, man. Like Michael, bruh. Man, Michael, bruh. <laughs> it's on another person. Yes, it is. This kid who went to school upstate in the country, whatever who is from the ghetto, um, and he tried to make something of his life. And he would leave his old friends behind. And when he came back um, on spring break or whatever, Thanksgiving break, his, friend be his friends became so uh, India jealous of him that mm -hmm. they killed him. But in the film, I don't die, of course. Yeah. So it's a true story that was, we had taken from Time or Newsweek magazine. Yeah. And, uh, and he is a black kid like me. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's a sad story, but we... You, Michael always got a message. Pardon? How does that make you feel when you see those sad stories? Oh, well, something like that is very sad because it's all negative. It's wrong. Mm -hmm. I think that's life, to want to grow and become more. And right. Like you plant a seed and it grows into something beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. never dies, really. I think people should be that way. You know what? My favorite song on the album is Man in the Mirror. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's my favorite song. That is my favorite song too. I tend to hold a feeling that no matter what you do in the world, it really has to start with you. It's right. Philosophy too. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. Um, is it hard so to do? Hmm. Yeah. Well, people don't look at themselves honestly. They don't mm. look at themselves and point the finger at them. It's always the other guy's fault or somebody else. You should change yourself. Um, look at yourself. Make mm. better of yourself. You know? <laughs> when you look in the mirror, are you happy with what you see? Mm. In, in what way? Just yeah. when you look there, in terms of that social philosophy. Um, I'm never totally satisfied. I always wish the world could be a better place. Um, no, not at all. Hopefully, you know, that's what I do with my music, mm -hmm. bring happiness to people and uh, to bring joy. Are you some a, peace in their lives. Are you a prayerful person? Pardon? I said, are you a prayerful type oh, person? Oh, yeah, yeah. I pray a lot, yeah. I see a beautiful sunset. I say, God, it's beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Or a baby smile or butterfly's wings or anything like that, you know. You know, on... I love your mic. <laughs> what? Oh, I love you. Oh, I love your mic. Oh, my God. Man, I just, I love your mic. That's all I got to say, bro. I love your mic, bro. The album version of I Just Can't Stop Loving You, you make some very strong, sensuous remarks to a woman that you're lying next to. <laughs> I was doing that. Really? Also, yeah. Really? <laughs> cover and everything. Okay. Did that whole rap you know, and, in and, the dark. And the, and the lyrics go, it goes, people really don't understand me. 
You know, I say a lot of people misunderstand me. Mm -hmm. That's because they don't know me. Mm. Mm -hmm. I guess that's true. Uh, people believe a lot of crazy stories they read. Yeah. Some is true, some is not. And uh, Does it hurt when you see those crazy stories? Sometimes. But it's part of the work, you know. Mm -hmm. You ever want to lash out in any type of way and say, hey, that's not true? Yeah, a lot of times. But why bring more attention to a thing? You uh -huh. know? Yeah. Is there another favorite song of mine? Is not as much as Man in the Mirror, but Liberian Girl. Mmm, I like that too, yeah. Is there a Liberian girl in your life? <laughs> no, I wrote that in the, at my house in the game room. I guess I was Damn. playing some pinball or something. <laughs> and the song just popped in my head. And, uh,. I think I ran upstairs, put it on tape, uh -huh. and uh, it became Liberian Girl. Same thing with... Like, bro, what? Are you playing the game? Look at it, like, light flex. Light flex, like, in my game room. Like, light flex. Like, just playing pinball and, like, Liberian Girl. Like, imagine, like, who... Liberian Girl. Like, I wish I had that time. Like, I'm, I'm pretty good... But like the, the great Liberian girl, oh man! In the way the the Michael um, uh, curated is, he always had tapes, like he said. So he would have like a melody, or he would hum the melody, or how the song should go, like a billion times to 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 to, to, to like get the song. But um, man, just Michael's the goat, bro. We are the world. We are the children. I. I didn't really, I mean, I don't know why those words came. They just came as that. Uh -huh. We are the ones God that gifted. brighter day, so let's start giving. <laughs> I didn't think about it. Just, you know, just come. Just come. How about, one thing that I find is like what you said, it took so long to come up with all the different songs on the album, and every song is different. You mm -hmm. have uh, Calypso influences. You have reggae influences. You have the new cool sound with one you have uh, heavy metal with uh, dirty diane i love dirty diane That's That's yeah one. i like that too yeah Why? because it's it's uh it's a life story of uh, a groupie um i hate to say the word groupie but that's what it is mm -hmm. and it's it's something that i've experienced and a lot of people who grow up on the road like me i mean i don't i don't remember not performing mm -hmm. and uh do you feel as though you missed out on something by not remembering not performing of mm. course, uh, but I've gained a lot too. Mm -hmm. A lot of people's never, a lot of people never get out of their hometown, get to see other wonderful places. Yeah. A lot of kids read about things that I get to see in person all over the world, in different places. Mm. So that's, I'm so happy about that. I mean, you never can have everything. Right. How does it feel when you? Go that's a great perspective to have because a lot of a lot of people um, wish they could be rich and famous and all that stuff. The, the you got to be rich. At, at, in the mind, in the heart, at home. Um, but also, get your passport, man. Get your passport. Try to see the world the most you can, when you can. Um, but I like, I like these follow-up questions. By the like, it's really a conversation. It doesn't really feel like an interview. It feels like a conversation. Shout out to whoever the interviewer is. I gotta look up to see who this was. But uh, great follow-up questions. Um, he actually is listening to what Michael is saying and retorting and having a real convo. But um, yeah, I really like that perspective of nobody can have everything, you know, so just try to appreciate what you have. So, ah, man, ah, man, always with wisdom, Michael, man, always with wisdom. And to do a concert somewhere and literally there are tens of thousands of people that are rushing over to you just to get a glimpse. That's a wonderful feeling, especially when you see them smiling and, uh, I love the fans, um, I think it's very sweet. I feel thankful is, is how I feel. I do really do. I don't take any of it for granted. What would you say? What interests you most about life? Ooh. What interests me most about life? What a question. <laughs> is learning, finding out new things, mm. exploring different worlds. Um, I'm so interested in the human anatomy now, the brain, and, mm -hmm. and um, so many different things like that, and the bones and everything. I know that, and you know, this is a sensitive area, but you were very much interested in the bones of the elephant man, John Merrick. 
Yes. Is that because of your anatomical interest? Yes, I've been to the London School for Doctors twice, and I visited John Merrick's uh, remains, who I, I feel a closeness to. I, I love the story of the elephant man. Um, it's a very sad story. Um, Would you someday like to do maybe a remake of the movie or the play? Mm, maybe. Maybe, but I feel it's been done so well already with David Lynch. And right. I think it was John Hurd who played. That's right. Who played I have it. no idea what they're talking about right now. <laughs> I have no idea what the Elephant Man is or like the story of the Elephant Man. I have no idea. So I'm like completely lost right now. <laughs> I gotta look it up. I'll look it up at the end. The Merrick, yeah. That I, I, uh, I don't think I could contribute any better than what they've done. The part that I like best is when after he gains confidence and then he's back on his way after having gone to the carney they st stole him out of the hospital uh, and then he's inside the subway station and then finally he has to yell oh, and yeah. a sigh of yeah leave me alone love. leave me alone i'm not an animal i'm a human i'm being. a human yeah. being do we as human beings treat people as animals too many times i think so Man's inhumanity to man. I mean, that's what war is all about. Mm. <laughs> Some of in the past. Are you scared of war? I don't think anybody likes war. In truth, mm. no, I don't like war. I like peace. I'm a peaceful person. Do you ever think about ever being an ambassador or anything like that? The fact that you're accepted around this whole world. You ever think about being some type of an ambassador? I feel I'm that already with with my music and what I've done. Mm. It breaks all barriers. I don't have to make a political statement. Mm. I do all of that with music. Mm -hmm. It breaks all language barriers and everything to all races of people. It goes all over the world. And it's fun to see kids from India or uh, whatever country you name, you know, who know about the music. Okay. Uh, last question, sure. This will be about the tour. Uh, appreciate the time. Can you? T Hold on one second. Okay. okay. Hold on. Let me see something real quick. Whatever country you name, you know, who know about the music. Okay. Hold on uh, one last question. Sure. This will be about the tour. Uh, appreciate the time. Wow. Look at the different shade from his face to his hand. Like, this is like severe. Uh, I believe in the interview with Oprah, he said he started getting a uh, vitiligo after Thriller. Like, that's that's got to be, you know, I don't think we talk about enough uh, people that experience this. Um, you know how how probably difficult that is, like to all of a sudden lose pigmentation or have blots and stuff. Um, wow! You never heard Michael Jackson complain about it once. Um, he did a couple interviews about it, but like he he just lived with it. Um, I still think it's 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 interesting how <laughs> the universe works to where the greatest entertainer of all time, even him. Get some type of 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 uh, get something that he has to deal with. She or she has to deal, get something that they have to deal with. Um, that's just interesting. But man, like wow. Hold on one okay. okay. Fire jacket, by the way. Why did you choose to start your worldwide tour in Japan and not really give your fans here in America a chance to see you until the end of the year? Well, as you remember, the Victory Tour was all American, and the rest of the world didn't get anything. So mm. it's, it's, good, it's good to be fair, you know. And actually, I think it's more fair because um, the show would be much better when we get here. The worst thing to me personally to see uh -huh. is, is an opening show because, you know, it's not as tight as it can be. Sure. And it was something that my manager had done, and the people who work for me, wherever they book it, if I like it, I'll go. You know, and I like Japan. I've been there before. Any apprehension about touring by yourself for the first time? I've done so much solo work. Even when I was little, 13, solo albums, solo appearances on TV shows, and 
and it's just another uh, road. But of course, you always think, feel things. I don't see Marlon next to me. I don't feel Jermaine. I don't, you know. <laughs> sure. So that is great. That's how you do an interview, Oprah's Winfrey. Uh, but what a great, uh, I'm going to try to find out who this interviewer is right now because that was an awesome interview. It was solely about the music, also about his life um, as well. Infusing life in, in music in a way that felt like a, a conversation. Um, yeah, that was great. That was great. That was great. Okay, by Daryl Denard. Shout out to Daryl Denard, man. Like, what a great interviewer. Again, felt like a conversation. Insightful questions. Like, the meaning of life and all kinds of stuff. Like, that's how you do an interview. Um, yeah, that was awesome, man. Man, I miss Michael. Love Michael. But like, comment, subscribe, share all the things of the things. Ain't gotta go home. Do get the hell out of here. Peace. Nope.